outside the industry, the churches, uh, political parties that believe in our constitution, uh, NGOs like the, uh, the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation have been behind us. And it is quite important that, you know, South Africans take this take up this battle because if we if we allow the threats to continue, who knows what will happen next? And we can't have a situation where journalists are not allowed to do their work, where journalists are actually threatened. We have to all take a stand as South Africans. These are my colleagues. We can all take questions, uh, whichever, uh, whatever else you guys want answered. Could you tell us about the altercation upstairs and what was said? Um, as Karima was saying, basically uh, we were insulted, especially, and that insult, the, the, ins the insults were directed particularly at us as black uh, journalists. You know, part of uh, our complaint here was because people like uh, Karima Brown and Ferial Hapiji were called Ascaris. In this day and age, this is the level of the insults that we are getting from the PLF and this is why we came to court to say that they must stop. But it is important that police take action. We have proven in court that what they're doing, these are criminal actions, you know, and we need police to actually step in and do the work. You mentioned threats though, what were the threats? I was told specifically I am doing it again by the same person who knocked my glasses off my face outside the house of Peter Bruce. She is right here in the court. She's with Angela Titama. Yesterday, one of the BLF members put her foot in my back for the entire time that the court proceedings were going on. The person that stood right next to me here a few minutes ago is reeking of alcohol. He identifies himself as a PAC member. They kept on saying, we as black journalists are not the enemy, we are puppets. They insulted my fatsy as if she has no agency to speak for herself. It's really interesting that black men from the BLF are telling black people female journalists that we can't think for ourselves that we are the agents of white monopoly capital and our bosses. In fact, it makes a mockery of the supposed defense of black people. The big question now for us is where is the SAPS? Because we saw that uh, this interdict has they've practically spat in the face of this interdict and exactly what the judge ruled today, just moments afterwards. So the question is where is the SAPS? Where is the minister who promised that um, he would be around to protect journalists? I think also you guys can also talk to other people that are supporting our, our fight because we've tried to make it very clear that this is not just about individual journalists. This is about protecting our constitution. We know that to measure the strength of any democracy, you need to have media, media freedom protected. And increasingly acts like this that we're seeing are testing that. I want to say all of our prayers were granted. I mean, we came here asking that uh, the PLF start stop harassing, assaulting, threatening uh, journalists. And the, the judge said they have to stop. But he even went even further and said that they have to put it on their website to, uh, within the next 12 hours. But also, more importantly, they said that the PLF must pay the cost for this legal application.